Mr. Vice President, dear friends, uh, let me first of all thank you for this uh, meeting. We all truly needed it. Too much has happened over the past month in, in your country, in, in the EU. Too many new and sometimes surprising uh, opinions have been voiced over um, this time about our relations and our common security for us to pretend that everything is as it used to be. And thank you for being so open and frank with me, Mr. Vice President. Today I had words which are promising for the future, words which explain a lot about the approach of the new administration in Washington. I repaid our guest by offering honesty in my assessment of the situation. I shared our concerns and hopes. Given that I am an incurably pro-American European who is uh, fanatically devoted to transatlantic cooperation, I could afford to be outspoken even more. I asked the Vice President directly if he shared my opinions on three key matters. International order, security and the attitude of the new American administration towards the European Union. Firstly, I expressed my belief that maintaining order based on the rules of international law where brute force and egoism do not determine everything lies in the interest of the West. And that maintaining that order can only be enforced through a common, mutually supportive and decisive policy of the whole of the Western community and for millions of people around the world. The predictability and stability of our approach provide a guarantee or, at the very least, hope that chaos, violence and arrogance will not triumph in a global dimension. Referring to some statements made in Munich just two days ago, I would like to say clearly that the reports of the death of the West have been greatly exaggerated. Whoever wants to demolish that order, anticipating a, a post-West order, must know that in its defense we will remain determined. Mm. Secondly, our security is based on NATO and the closest possible transatlantic cooperation. We must work together to modernize the forms of this cooperation. Some of them should indeed be improved. But we should also, I believe, agree on one thing. The idea of, of NATO is not obsolete, just like the values which lay at its foundation are not obsolete. Let us discuss everything, starting with financial commitments but only to strengthen our solidarity, never to weaken it. Thirdly, we are counting, as always in the past, on the United States wholehearted and unequivocal, let me repeat, unequivocal support for the idea of a united Europe. The world would be a decidedly worse place if Europe were not united. Americans know best what great value it is to be united and that becoming divided is the prelude to a fall. It is in the interest of us all to prevent the disintegration of the West. And as for our continent, in this respect, we will not invent anything better than the European Union. In reply to these three matters, I heard today from Vice President Pence three times, yes. After such a positive declaration, both Europeans and Americans must simply practice 
what they preach. On Saturday in Munich, you mentioned that during your trip across Europe in 1977 with your older brother, you found yourselves at some point in, in West Berlin, marveling at what you saw, then crossing through Checkpoint Charlie only to see the shadow of repression hanging over people. As you know, I had been living, I had been living under this shadow for over 30 years. What I vividly remember from my own past is how after martial law was imposed in Poland on the December 13th, 1981, President Ronald Reagan urged all Americans to light a solidarity candle on Christmas Eve as he did himself. It is not difficult to imagine how this moving message of American solidarity with the oppressed Polish nation against, as Reagan said, the forces of tyranny and those who inside them from without helped bring back hope and the determination not to give in. In your speech, you also highlighted the historic role of some American and European leaders, including Václav Havel and Lech Wałęsa. I was lucky to cooperate closely with the two of them in, in difficult times. Similarly to us, they all believed in the purpose of cooperation and solidarity between Europe and the US. We cannot let the efforts go to waste. After today's talks, it will be easier for me to believe that we will fulfill this task. Thank you.